Hey guys, what is up? Public here back with another video and today we are talking about Shadow Priest inside of Season 2. Uh, specifically, this is more kind of a preview video. Things are constantly kind of changing, especially with the raids not quite released yet. Hopefully this comes out before the patch launches. But I wanted to kind of get something out because we have a rework coming, or at least a mini one. Uh, so I want to kind of give you some time to prep and think about how that's going to work. Um, and hopefully this will stay relevant for at least a few weeks into the patch. Um, what the plan is, I'll do something more updated after like a week or two of it actually launching once things kind of settle in because i do expect some numbers tuning might change some stuff up maybe some talents will change things like that but without uh you know too many craziness let's go ahead and dive into shadow priest all right so the first thing i want to talk about is just what's changed so i'm not going to cover absolutely everything uh there are patch notes you can check out um but i wanted to give you kind of like the big highlights of what's changed with shadow so like i said it is kind of a mini rework some stuff is is changed uh there's i think the base is still the same uh let's start with the class changes honestly not a whole lot here the ones i wanted to highlight is shadow or desk cooldown is now 10 seconds um, and now generates four insanity as well um they did nerf its damage to compensate but they did want to make Shadow or Death be something that doesn't feel bad to press, um, especially by itself. So it's kind of a movement global, not something we use rotationally, but it's there if you need it. The other change to call out is Psychic Scream, our AoE Fear, and then Void Tendrils, the AoE Root, um, now hit all enemies within 8 yards instead of capped at 5. Um, so Psychic Scream in particular is really nice. It's basically an AO, a full AoE stop now, assuming the mob can be feared, which is nice. Void Tendrils use case, still kind of iffy, but it's there if you need kind of a mass route and you can get in melee. Um, so that does mean in the class tree, you know, you might get more use out of Psychic Voice or maybe even Petrifying Scream inside of keys, um, but that is there if you want it. Now, spec changes. This is where things get really fun and interesting. The talent tree has received quite a lot of changes. Um, I'm not, again, like I said, not going over everything, but the highlights here, they removed a bunch of stuff. So, Mind Seer, Dark Void, Coalescing Shadows, Puppet Master, Harness Shadows, Pain of Death, Surge of Darkness, Encroaching Shadows, and Damnation have all been removed. Um, yeah, they kind of went crazy here. So, um, obviously, some of those were really passive talents that didn't do a whole lot with your gameplay. The big ones that got removed are obviously uh, Mind Seer, notably going away, and Surge of Darkness, I think, would be the other big one a lot of people were uh, used to having. So, we do not have those anymore. What do we have instead? So, they've moved up Psychic Link as the kind of replacement for Mind Seer, and they've made Psychic Link work with all of our single target spells. Importantly, this also includes Devouring Plague Initial Damage and Devouring Plague Ticks. Uh, which is pretty cool. So basically, you doing your single target rotation is your main source of AoE now. That's how everything goes forward. There's no two insanity spenders. You now always spend insanity with Devouring Plague. Um, so yeah, pretty big shakeup. Now, noted, Psychic Link works with everything except for um, uh, just pure AoE spells like Halo, Divine Starve. Doesn't work for those. And then Shadow Word Pain, Vampiric Touch, Ticks, um, as well as Shadowy Apparition Damage. Everything else, fair game. The two big ones for us that got added there is Devouring Plague and Shadow Word Death, which is not there before. Um, all kind of baked in now. Okay, so like I mentioned, things got shuffled around, so the layouts of a lot of stuff got moved, and they've kind of replaced some of the talents that we've lost that I mentioned. Now, as part of that, they did remove or split out. Shadowy Insight and Shadow Crash are now split into two points. So Shadow Crash baseline is now 20 seconds but no longer applies Vampiric Touch unless you take Whispering Shadows, which gives it back that dot application. Um, like I said, it's now two talent points for effectively what we used to have. Um, they did make Shadow Crash a 20 second cooldown, so you can fully sustain dots with it, but yeah. And then Shadowy Insight, they removed the extra charge of Mind Blast and shoved it up here in the tree instead. Um, so it's all still kind of there, just a little moved around, a little different. Um, and then the other big one to note is Mind Spike now replaces Mind Flay. So if you talent into Mind Spike, you don't get Mind Flay anymore. Um, to make that work, anything that works with Mind Flay now also works with Mind Spike. Dark Evangelism, Procking Idol of Cthune, um, any of that stuff, uh, it now works with that instead. Um, so you can't have both anymore. That's kind of how that is. Some other small things, Void Torrent now triggers Idol of Cthune automatically as soon as you press Void Torrent. Um, and Void Torrent can also now spawn additional tendrils. So it does make Idol of Cthune feel a little more consistent than what we've had in the past. Um, they've added a lot of new talents. So we have things like Mastermind, Phantasmal Pathogen, Void Touched, 
Um, not a lot of these are super rotational altering. Some of them, like these new Devouring Plague choices, are a bit more rotation altering. We'll cover those in the talent section. Um, but yeah, a couple new interesting things there. Um, one other thing to note, uh, kind of sad, Vampiric Embrace in the patch no longer works with Psychic Link damage, uh, which was pretty silly that it did in the first place, but this was a, a lot of healing, especially inside of Mythic Plus. You could easily solo packs when you had this up. So you will notice Vamp Embrace healing do less than you did before. Um, it's still decent, although it's not as impressive as it was in the past. So, um, And at a high level, that is all of the changes to Shadow. Um, let's kind of dive into talents and what that actually looks like with our builds. Okay, before I dive too much into talents, uh, just to note, these builds are what it's like right now. Things very much change or tweak with these builds. I imagine the core structure will probably stay the same, but if you want the fully up-to-date ones, make sure you check the link in the description. Um, Icy Veins or wherever else I have linked will have whatever is current, depending on when you're watching this video. Um, for right now, I'm going to go over a couple builds, about five today. Um, these five builds will get you through basically anything as a Shadow Priest, and this is even a little overkill, just being detailed. So this is our raid single target build. You're going to take Void Eruption primarily now in single target. Uh, Dark Ascension is possible. It's just a little far behind. Uh, just, uh, I think, like 2% or something like that. So it's not crazy if you really don't want it, but otherwise Void Eruption is your go-to. A um, couple other things to highlight. Mind Spike is going to be taken in almost every single build now. Um, obviously, I said this was single target, but um, just to note, I do take uh, Psychic Link in almost all of these as well. Obviously, if it is pure 100% single target, you don't need to take Psychic Link, and you can afford to drop it for one of these utility points. Look something like this on like absolutely pure single target, um, but obviously, depends on the situation, what you want to drop and move around. Um, other notable highlights, you're going to take Idol of Yogg-Saron and Cthune, uh, somewhat similar to what we do on, on live, or at least there was an option to do this on live. Um, and yeah, this is kind of how things look. As far as rotationally, how this thing plays, it's going to be really similar to what we have before or in in the previous patch. I'll go over the rotation in just a little bit, though. But this is kind of what you're looking for in single target. There are a couple options here that you could move stuff around, notably things in this kind of uh, middle section. So like Mind Devourer could be swamped around for like Dark Evangelism or even Maddening Touch have some options there. Um, other things to note... There is a new talent called Distorted Reality that effectively makes it easier to maintain Devouring Plague, um, at least on a single target. Um, it is not the ideal choice in single target. So if you are new to Shadow Priest and you're still trying it out and you're struggling keeping up Devouring Plague, even with Mind's Eye, the other new talent, um, you can run Distorted Reality. It's about an 8% loss single target, something like that. But it's certainly something you can do, especially if you're just learning the spec. Might even be more damage as you're learning. Um, but, uh, you know, Mind's Eye is going to be the go-to for single target otherwise. Um, other question, you might be wondering, hey, I really hate running Mind Spike. Uh, do, I, do I have to run this? Uh, no, you do not, quote, have to run it. Um, it is anywhere between 2 or 3% damage increase over Mind Flight. Like I said, that's why we generally always take it. Um, if you did not want to take it for whatever reason, certainly could. You would just put those two points elsewhere, likely into Dark Evangelism on single target, and then you would finish out the build. Um, as normal. So you do have an option for that if you need it. Um, although for most people, we'll do something like this. Now, the other option that you have is with this very last talent point. Generally speaking, we put this into Screams of the Void, even though it's just one point, you're actually getting quite a good chunk of value out of this, especially now that it just, just triggered off of Devouring Plague. Um, not the most exciting talent in the world. You could certainly swap this around if you want. Um, some people might want to run Death Speaker if they want a little bit of punchier uh, movement uh, options with Shadow or Death procs. Certainly an option, although even in heavy movement, you're still going to take a little bit of a loss not running Screams um, if you want. So most people probably run this. So. Uh, so that is our single target build. Class tree is, is just what you were running before. The only caveat that I'll mention on the class tree, you could now run Divine Star if you want more instant cast for movement. Just note that to get value out of this, you do want to be within... 24 yards of your target when to actually hit it twice otherwise you're only going to hit it once or maybe even miss completely it does make the opener a little bit nicer as well not super required but it is an option more of an option now than it was before um okay the other audible i want to talk about is shadow crash so let's say there's a fight that you want to do mostly single target but there is ads to hit um at that point you might want to pick up shadow crash the way you do that, you drop Void Touched and Mental Decay, and then you get Shadow Crash and Whispering Shadows. And then, obviously, you have to take Psychic Link. 
Um, obviously, as, as this looks, uh, you cannot pick up these utility nodes without dropping either Dispersion or Silence or some damage here. Um, if you do find yourself in that spot uh, and you'd be like, man, I, even with this build, I, you know, I have to take all this stuff, but I want one of these. If you can't drop Silence, which, you know, maybe you can, you can take Mental Fortitude that way. The point to drop in either of these builds would be um, Mind Devourer or Phantasmal Pathogen. Those would be the kind of the options, at least in this build. Um, if we go back, if you don't even want Shadow Crash, you know, you could drop Void Touch or Mental Decay. But in this build, when you want both, that's the one of these uh, four points, <laughs> either Mind Devourer or Phantasmal, to drop to get that extra point of utility. So, but I imagine this is a, a build we'll run quite often. Again, you're getting almost all of the single target value from this build. It's like a couple percent behind in pure single target. Um, but uh, yeah, but it does you that kind of extra add damage with Shadow Crash applying dots. Um, the other raid build I go over is the kind of multi-target build. The raid doesn't have a whole bunch of this, uh, at least from like a sustained multi-target perspective. You might see it a little bit. Um, this actually looks pretty similar to what we'll run in Mythic Plus in just a second. Uh, the two-target build, notably the big change here is we're now running three idols. So what we did with our points, we actually dropped the two points of Insidious Ire, and then we moved those over here to finish out the path to Nazoth. So now you get three idols worth of damage. Very strong as soon as you hit two plus targets. This is a really great build for that. And honestly, it's not losing that much single target either. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. Although you notice the one change is now you take Distorted Reality. So like I mentioned before, you could take it in single target, but this is primarily um, a multi-target talent. It lets you get some actual decent uptime of Devouring Plague on multiple targets. So you're kind of spreading out the, the kind of the value of Devouring Plague. Um, this works really well with Phantasmal Pathogen, which increases Shadow Apparition damage on any target that has Devouring Plague, plays into the tier set, all that good stuff. So anytime you're in like two plus targets sustained, you'll get pretty good value out of Distorted Reality. Now note, if you're just facing this two target not a whole lot, or you're not getting great uptime, it will suffer. So in Mythic Plus, like if you're not getting full uptime of that dot, you're, you're, you're losing out value here. But in sustained multi-target, you'll see pretty good value out of this. Um, and then as far as like, just to mention the optional note, once you get above two targets, like into like three and four sustained targets, which again, there's really not in the new raid, but if you end up, you know, f facing a lot more and that's kind of what you're looking for, um, the change that you make here to, to make that work, you actually drop mind spike at that point. Um, so you will run mind flay here. And again, this is in a very heavy multi-target starting at like four targets, something like that. And instead, we pass through Void Touch to get down to Destroyed Reality, and then we finish off the build as normal. So this is what it will look like for like four targets. Swap Mind Spike over, pick up Shadow Crash. It's just much easier to maintain dots that way. Um, otherwise, this is your two target build. Okay, so let's talk about dungeons. So for dungeon builds, you have a bit of flexibility here, a bit more than raids, honestly. Um, there's kind of competitive Void Eruption builds and then competitive Dark Ascension builds. The primary use case is going to be, you know, how often can you afford to get your damage out? Or do you need to have the kind of one minute damage cooldowns of Dark Ascension? I think most people will feel most comfortable with this Void Eruption build. Again, very similar to the raid multi-target build that we were just looking at. It's a, a triple idle setup, very, very similar. Um, although it does kind of lean over to Mending Touch. Otherwise, very similar to what we were running in the four target situation. Um, now note, it does take Mind's Eye here. Generally speaking, inside of Mythic Plus, especially with the triple idol build with Screams, the interactions you get by pressing Devouring Plague more but losing uptime actually outweigh the value in terms of like overall damage. Um, the big difference here is single target. That loss in single target really makes Distorted Reality hard to play with this build. Or not hard to play, but you're losing a bit too much. So generally speaking, this version will run... Um, mind's eye. Now, if you care more about AoE than you do about single target on dungeon, you can just literally keep everything else the same and take that. Certainly an option, but just know that's the reason we do that. Um, and again, this should be working for almost every key. This dungeon, this build should be very strong and very competitive single target. It's like, um, I think it's like 3% behind the raid build that takes Shadowcraft, so it's, it's pretty close. Um, 
Okay, now let's talk about the weird one. Uh, so this is the Dark Ascension dungeon build. And really the purpose of this is to give you more damage options on a one minute cooldown instead of the two minutes with Void Eruption. Now it does not take Yashiraj or Mindbender or Inescapable Torment. There are some options where you could take that instead. Although, generally speaking, it, it didn't make sense in the Sims I was running. It really wasn't worth it. I think what it would do is actually it would drop Screams and One Point of Ire, and you could run something like this instead if you really wanted, again, more hard one-minute damage. But again, we generally saw that Insidious Ire and the One Point in Screams was more valuable than Mindbender and Inescapable Torment. So this is like what I would call the go-to build for that. Again, when you want one minute damage, it's really not playing any differently. It is kind of saying, I don't really care about Apparitions. I don't really care about yogg -Saron, but it still does pretty competitive, especially with um, all things together. It does take one of the other new talents called Mastermind. It revolves a bit more around crit, although it doesn't actually want more crit, uh, strangely enough. Um, when you actually get down to the nitty gritty, this is increasing your critical strike chance and damage by enough to where more more crit actually isn't doing a whole lot. Um, Haste Mastery, still your go-to even with this build. Um, this one does run Destroyed Reality. This was, you know, again, there was an audible here. You could take Mind's Eye. Again, same build, but with Mind's Eye, um, if you care more about single target and you want the one minute cadence. Um, but if you're in kind of AoE, this one would be the more distorted reality heavy build than anything um so yeah it's kind of a weird one again you know you still got to play with it a bit myself but this is a another option for dungeon builds or at least a base to work from um and you can there's a couple points of flexing and experimenting i didn't mention with the other one there is you do have some options with this build i forgot to mention mostly in this kind of middle section here so you have effectively four points of flex with almost any dungeon build um, I put them into two points into Matting Touch, two points into Phantasmal Pathogen. It's a pretty good breakdown here. Um, but again, you can flex those kind of four points anywhere in this kind of reverse L shape. So if you really want more single target, the way you do that, you'd pick up Mental Decay, probably Mind Devourer, or yeah, probably Mind Devourer. Um, you could, you could do something like this. You could put that one point into Dark Evangelism. Um, if you care more about AOE, you could do... Uh, full Maddening Touch. Um, this is what I had before. This is a pretty good AoE setup. You could also drop Phantasmal Pathogen and go Mind Devourer instead. Kind of depends on what you're looking for, though. So you do have a bit of flex between Maddening Touch, Dark Evangelism, Mind Devourer, Phantasmal Pathogen, and Mental Decay, depending on where you want to kind of fine-tune your build. Uh, you can do the same thing with the Dark Ascension build, although it's, a it's not quite as flexible. Um, specifically with this build... Phantasmal Pathogen doesn't really make as much sense, but you still have the same flex uh, with these four points with the Maddening, Dark Evangelism, Mind of Hour, and Mental Decay. Um, yeah, so that's Talent Builds. I know it's quite a lot, but hopefully this gives you a base to work with. And like I said, all these are linked in the description below for you to easily copy and try them out yourself. Let me know what you think. Okay, so let's talk about the rotation. Um, in the background, you'll see me doing the single target rotation for a little bit just to give you something to look at. Um, but without going into too much detail, I do think looking at a written guide is probably the easiest way to do this. Well, watch me play it a little bit. But I wanted to kind of simplify the rotation into very simple goals for how to play. Shadow Priest can have quite a bit going on. But honestly, if you boil it down into very simple points, hopefully it makes it easier to understand what to actually do. Um, so the goals with Shadow's rotation... Number one is maintaining Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch on as many targets as you can. Generally speaking, it's about up to 12 targets. Um, and then Shadow Crash is the main way you want to do this if you're ta if you're talenting into it, which you should be anytime you're, especially in three, four plus targets, you definitely want Shadow Crash. Um, so yeah, first goal, keep up Vampiric Touch and Shadow Word Pain. That's like, if you can do that, that's, that, that's your first point. Uh, your second point is your third dot, so Devouring Plague. So your goal with Devouring Plague is to maintain as much uptime of that dot as possible without capping on Insanity. So you don't just want to spam this every time you get enough Insanity to cast it. You want to delay it out a little bit to get as much uptime of the dot as possible. But obviously, if you're capping on Insanity, that's when you want to short circuit, you know, ca uh, waiting for the duration and just cast it because you don't want to waste resource. Um, so if you can do that, you're in a good, sh good shape. Now, caveat there with Devouring Plague. If you are taking Destroyed Reality for any of those multi-target situations, that's when you're, you are kind of sending Devouring Plague 
as you get enough resource to maintain it on multiple targets. That's how that works. Um, so that's goal number two. Now, goal number three, and this is kind of the basics here, use your short cooldowns. So this is stuff like Mind Blast and Void Bolt, um, even the Mind Flay Insanity or Mind Spike Insanity procs. Um, you want to use those next. And the reason you want to use those is because they're on a very short cooldown. If you don't use them relatively close to on cooldown, you're going to lose uses of them. So generally speaking, you want to send those in this kind of next batch of things. Now, goal number four, once those things are on cooldown, or at least, um, so like for Mind Blast, for example, you don't just always dump all charges of Mind Blast, just get one charge on cooldown, so it's at least the cooldown is ticking. Once you're in that spot, then that's when you can start sending your long cooldowns. Um, and generally speaking, this is stuff like Void Torrent um, or, or things like that, Mind Games, any of those spells that have a bit longer of cooldown, you want to use them you know, as much as you can to get as many casts of them as possible. But you want to make sure you're not sitting or, you know, Void Bolt isn't available, Mind Blast isn't available, stuff like that before you send them. And the other big thing is you want to make sure you don't cap on Insanity, but should be quite easy, a lot easier with this, this patch. Now, you do want to make sure before you're using Void Torrent or even Mind Games, things like that, you don't want to be capping on Insanity, but that should be pretty straightforward. And then the last goal is use your big cooldowns on cooldown. That's that's really what it comes down to. You got Void Form, cool. Use it every two minutes. Sync it up with Power Infusion. Should be nice and easy. Uh, if you're using Shadow Fiend, you can use that every three minutes. Um, generally speaking, doing that is the best way to do it. You don't want to hold on to it. So Shadow Fiend will be used at zero minutes, three minutes, six minutes. That six minute one should get your two minutes back because it's on the two minute interval. That's how that works. You don't want to hold it otherwise. Um, and yeah, that's really Shadow Priest in a nutshell. If you can get those things down, you're good to go. Um, the rotation guide will go into a bit more depth as far as press this than that. Here's your priority. But those goals are kind of what you want to do to figure out Shadow. If you can, if you can get those down, you're in good shape. Uh, so just to recap, maintain Shadow Pain and Vampiric Touch on up to 12 targets. Use Shadow Crash to help you out here. Um, second goal, maintain Devouring Plague. Maximize uptime, but don't cap on insanity. If you're using Disordered Reality, you can tab Devouring Plague, though. Uh, third, use your short cooldown spells like Mind Blast and Void Bolt. Make sure you don't lose uses of those guys when they're available. Then you want to use your long cooldowns. This is stuff like Void Torrent, Mind Games, Halo, and AoE, that kind of stuff. And then use your big cooldowns on cooldown. If you can handle all those goals, you're in good shape. Like I said, hopefully this helps. Um, I'll try to do more in-depth rotation stuff as we get more into it and figure things out more, but that's that's the basics. Okay, let's quickly go over just in general prepping your character for whatever that you want to do. So we'll go over just kind of consumables, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of this is mostly unchanged, but we'll cover it anyway. So for your temporary augment rune, a howling rune is still going to be your go-to, the one that gives you haste. Um, as you get a ton of gear, you might consider swapping over to the new Hissing Rune, which now gives Mastery. Not something I would advise until you're like starting rocking a lot of Mythic gear in the next tier, but an option if you need it. Um, Leg Enchant, still the Frozen Spell Thread. There was a new one added, but this one's still uh, doing well. Uh, I would suggest sticking with it. Weapon Enchant, still looking like Sovic Devotion, is our top one, although again, Depending on your gear, if you ever get super unlucky with drops and you find yourself running, especially below 30% haste, you could also consider running the Wafting Devotion Enchant as well. But for most people, you'll have above 30% haste. Use this guy. Chest Enchant, Waking Stats, still your go-to. And then Ring, generally speaking, you still want to use Haste Enchants on your ring uh, rings. Although, again, like I already mentioned, if you find yourself at like... 35, 36% haste, or like you're you're creeping up there, might be worth to swap out for mastery enchants. I would suggest sending your character on raid bots to check for sure though. Um, same will go for gems as well. Prefer haste, obviously you can go mastery though. Um, now for alchemy stuff, we have a new file. So with a bunch of changes in patch 10.1, it's now boosted how good ice file of corrupting rage actually is. So if you're not sure, this gives you just a bunch of crit. And then after suffering 400% uh, of your health and damage, you get afflicted with this um, uh, with this dot, um, and then it restarts after that. The reason why we didn't take this before, obviously it does have a negative effect, which that part isn't great, um, but it didn't have the, the best uptime. It was like roughly like 70% uptime conservative, conservatively. 
Um, but now going to 10.1, they've given everyone more health. Things do hit harder, but we have more health. Uh, mental fortitude gets a little bit better with that. Um, with everything else happening, I think they also changed to it's now 400% of your health instead of I think it was just 100%. Um, so you should get more uptime of this guy. Um, once you're at, if you get like 60 or 70% uptime of this is equivalent to the verse file that we were using in the past, just to give you an idea. Um, when you get upwards of like 85, 95% uptime, this thing can do almost twice as much in terms of throughput compared to the verse file. So if you're ever in a situation where you know you can keep high uptime of this, you want to use this guy as your kind of default. Um, obviously, if you're in a prog situation, you're you're getting really bad uptime on this or something else like that, consider not using it um, and go back to the verse file, but otherwise this should be your default. And then potion, same, same uh, L multiple potion of ultimate power, it's still your go-to. Um, now, other things to cover. So let's talk about just in general gearing and stats. You still want to hover um, haste as your best stat and then mastery as a close second. You want to keep them kind of close together. Like don't go too hard into haste. Um, like like I mentioned, once you hit that like 35% threshold of haste, that's when like, okay, maybe I should tweak, put more of this into mastery a little bit. Um, and then critical strike and then verse. Um, what this means is for your gems, you generally speaking want to use the Keen Yesmerold, uh, the one that's heavy haste and low mastery. Although again, once you start crossing that higher haste threshold, try simming out for the heavy mastery, uh, low haste gem. Um, and the same thing, the primary stat gem always want to use this guy. Generally speaking, we'll use the, the haste one, but try out with the mastery one as well. Um, the beauty of haste, and you might not always see this in your sims, it does help correct for mistakes more. Not everyone plays perfectly. I'm sure you guys saw me mess up the rotation a bit ago. Tried my best. Um, but haste is good at helping kind of covering up some of those mistakes or movement or forced mechanics, th those kinds of things. That's why I generally speaking say to prefer haste. Um, let's see, other things to cover. All right, let's talk about gearing kind of in general. Now that we kind of have... The, the stats and so uh, figured out. Um, so with gearing, um, I'll see what we have in the vendors here. So obviously the big question is with embellishments. Um, on live, a lot of people on our suggestion were running elemental lariat and then they were running blue silk and lining. Um, this is going to, the guidance for this is gonna shift a little bit in 10.1. Um, couple reasons for that. Elemental lariat is actually nerfed going into the patch. So. Elemental Lariat is break even when you log in if you have eight sockets, one primary and then seven of the same type of gem. If you have that, it's technically equal, completely even. Um, but as we gear, as you upgrade pieces, even if they have season one sockets, you will naturally lose some of those sockets and you'll see Lariat's value go down. Um, so from an embellishment perspective, partially because of that and just how things have scaled, um, elemental lariat will be something you'll probably phase out of your gearing at some point. Um, there is also a couple good necks in, in the next season, or at least one good one, I should say. Um, so that does help out a lot. Now, what we're going to replace that with instead, generally speaking, what's looking like consistently that looks good is the blue silken lining. When you're above 90% health, you gain mastery. That's it. Pretty simple. Uh, you can stack this so you can run it. You can run it on two pieces of gear. Um, that will be a good option for a lot of people. Um, the other thing to consider, this is the new embellishment, is called, uh, let's see if we can find it, Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch. It's just like a random proc of damage that like keeps stacking. Um, this one's also doing pretty well. Actually, sounds pretty good, especially on single target. Um, it doesn't scale super well, though. So as you get out of single target, you'll see Blue Silk and Lining overtake Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch. So I think from like a balanced perspective, you could go one Blue Silk and Lining, one Shadow Flame. Or if you care more about Mythic Plus and like that kind of thing, you could just run double Blue Silk and Lining. Also a good option as well. Uh, double Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch is definitely fine. It's more consistent than Blue Silken will be. Obviously, one of the downsides, if you can't stay above 90% health, specifically during your cooldowns, Blue Silken's value just goes down, right? So if you find yourself in that situation a lot, you know, consider swapping things out. Um, but that's your kind of general embellishment guideline. Now, that being said, there's kind of an honorable mention that I want to bring up. Um... And it's Undulating Spore Cloak. This is an embellished item. 
Um, you'll craft it in the next patch. Uh, you can craft it in the next patch. It does not give you any damage, but it is a lot of defensive value. So while above 70% health, you heal X amount every five seconds. And then when you fall below 30%, you get this giant shield. I think it's like over 200K or it's, it's a crazy amount of a shield when you go below 30% health. Um, in my opinion, the like 1% gain you're getting from Blue Silken Lining or Shadow Flame Tempered Armor Patch, 1%, 1.5%, um, uh, there are a lot of cases where I would give up that 1% of damage and use this defensive cloak instead. Something to consider. I think, you know, you, you can also pick the stats on the cloak, so it's got what you want. Um, so something to consider. Obviously, there is a good cloak in the next raid that gives us like crazy proc. It's like a rare item cloak off the last boss. Not a lot of people are going to get that. So I do think I would strongly consider undulating spore cloak for your embellishments. Now, uh, to cover other stuff, so let's talk about trinkets. Um, let's find our lovely trinket vendor. Okay, trinkets are still being tuned. They've been kind of messing around with trinkets quite a lot recently. So take all of what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. Check the guides down below if you want up-to-date info. Um, top three trinkets for raiding. Neltharian's Call to Suffering. This is the cloak class trinket we share with rogues death knights and druids um it's just a proc that gives us intellect the it does give you know make us suffer damage over time so again when you're thinking about all these effects that are kind of hitting you potentially if you mess up raid mechanics or whatever you'll see the spore cloak kind of rise in value um this guy is a set it and forget it all the time this is very very strong for us easily our best trinket i think even at lfr you would use it over almost anything so especially because you can upgrade the LFR one, uh, at least to, up to normal. So get this no matter, like, this is your goal. Get this trinket. Um, for raid, the next one to consider is called Igneous Flowstone. Um, it's just a passive trinket. Good to go. Double passive. Uh, can just use it <laughs> just, just normally. Um, and then the kind of third or kind of runner-up trinket to bring up is Spoils of Neltharis. Uh, this is an on-use trinket. Just bind it to power and fusion, and you're good to go. It's your kind of top three situation. Now, that being said, as you gear up, item level on trinkets is important. Um, almost every trinket in the raid is actually pretty competitive as a Shadow Priest. So I mentioned Igneous and, and the class trinket already. The Chromatic Ominous, uh, Chromatic Essence is decent. Vessel of Searing Shadow is actually pretty decent. Screaming Black Dragon Scale is fine. Um, Beacon to the Beyond, this one kind of sucks. It's like an AoE trinket. It's uh, even a Mythic Plus, not the greatest. But you have a lot of options for trinkets, um, even outside of the three I mentioned before. And then for Mythic Plus, same thing. You still want the class trinket. Still use this guy for sure. Um, and then you're kind of number two, number three-ish. Erupting Spear Fragment actually does pretty well. It's just an on-use trinket that can do AoE damage. It's actually pretty decent. Is it a, It's a minute and 30 second cooldown, but we don't need to sync it with our cooldowns. Um, so it's actually not, not bad. Although it doesn't give us crit, so I do think the default behavior is to still bind this with Power Infusion, but check uh, check the guide in the description. We'll see what I end up finalizing this at. Um, and then your kind of third trinket again is Spoils of Neltharis. Um, Igneous Flowstone, okay for single target, okay in like two th two targets, okay, three targets, okay. Um, but for like overall Mythic Plus, it doesn't do, it's not the best. Um, so yeah, basically the kind of top three that you want to get, Neltharian's Call to Suffering, Igneous Flowstone, and then Spoils will pretty much set you, like that's your golden three, and then maybe Erupting Spear Fragment. And that is kind of what we're aiming for with Trinkets. Now, heading to the new tier, still hold on to Void Menders and Whispering Incarnate Icon if you have it. Those should last you a little bit into the tier. Furious Rage Feather actually got nerfed with the launch of the patch by 10%. Not a whole lot, um, but yeah, just got just got dinged a little bit, so keep that in mind. Make sure you sim your character. Um, okay, I've been talking for a long time. Let's briefly cover the tier set. So I wanted to mention... Um, Shadow's new tier set. Obviously, the raid has not launched yet. Things might change. But as of right now, um, and again, the stats on the items, I think, are still TBD. So not even sure which ones we're going to be aiming for yet. Um, but the, the tier set's okay. Uh, we actually don't play around at all. It's completely passive. You really don't need to track it whatsoever. Um, it's about an 8% gain on a single target and like 5% in like a Mythic Plus overall scenario, 4%. 
Um, so it's not a very, very strong tier set. So you're not like chomping at the bit to get this as soon as possible and like dropping eye level to use it necessarily. Um, it's there. Um, yeah, hopefully we, there's time to tune it. I mean, we'll see what happens, but yeah. Okay, that's all that I have for this video. Enjoy it. I hope you like looking at my dwarf character. Uh, if you didn't realize, you can also... There's cross-faction guilds in the next, next, uh, next patch. So you can swap to Alliance if you're a horde like me. Uh, from a DPS game perspective, not going to cover that. Sims are down below if you care about it. Um, but yeah, that's all we have for this video. Again, this was meant to be like a preview for the patch. All of this stuff uh, very well might be outdated by the time you're watching this. Uh, the description, the links down there will tell you for sure if that's true. Um, if it gets severely outdated, I will make a new video at some point. I'm hoping to do it like with more like raid information and after like the raids come out and that kind of thing. So look out for that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, hopefully this has been helpful and enjoy patch 10.1 and season two. We'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.